If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth? And the way that they can have life and have it in abundance. To draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way? Morning. <clears throat> How's everybody doing this morning? <clears throat> Please excuse my voice a little bit, but... I've been under the weather the last few days. What does that really mean under the weather? Has anybody been over the weather? <laughs> it's just, I guess it's a figure of speech or saying, right? Under the weather, so I don't know what that means. But anyway, you all understand what I'm talking about. So praise God. Um, <clears throat> you know, this morning when I got to church, this morning when I got here, I already had my message all planned out and everything. And then at the last minute, the Lord changed it. Because we just finished celebrating the 4th of July, Independence Day, right? The freedom of the United States. We became a free nation, right? So, But today I want to talk a little bit about what it's like to have true freedom. And true freedom only comes through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just, we're so grateful for you, Father God. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for your truth. We're thankful for your freedom, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, we invite you here this morning to just speak to us and guide us in all truth. Whatever's in me, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that, that's going to try to hinder us this morning, we demand it to leave in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, just have your way. Speak and guide in all your truth. Father, we're thankful, we're grateful, and we're honored to be here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen. Praise the Lord. So everybody have a good 4th of July? Yeah, are you guys still lighting bottle rockets and firecrackers and... I don't know, people, man, they must have spent thousands and thousands of dollars, man. They're like still going off till 2 o'clock this morning. And like my dog, she's crazy because she goes and hides and we can't find her. We're looking for her everywhere. She's under the bed. She's in the closet. She's under my shoes. She's crazy. But praise God. So, you know, we just celebrated the freedom of, of having a free nation. And and I'm so thankful for our military. I'm thankful for the men and women that gave their lives, that gave everything on our behalf because we wouldn't be able to be here today if it wasn't for them. And for those of you that serve, that are veterans, that are here this morning, I just want to say thank you. I will never take that for granted as long as I live. You know... I've always respected the military and I've always honored them. But until my own family started getting in, involved in military and stuff, it just became more personal. Why? Because I knew somebody now. You know, my nephew served two tours in um, Afghanistan and, and then my niece was in the Army and my other nephew was in the Navy and one nephew was in the, in the Army as well. <clears throat> But it became a little more personal. Why? Because now people within my bloodline were out there fighting for my freedom. And I'm just so grateful and thankful for them. But I want you to know that your freedom was given to you over 2,000 years ago when Jesus died for you. See, He gave the ultimate sacrifice so that you and I can have life and have it in abundance. He gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we can be cleansed of all unrighteousness so that we can be cleansed from our sin, so that we can be cleansed from what keeps us from our Lord. So when you think of freedom, what do you think? We usually associate with the right to live as we please and pursue our ambitions and dreams. Freedom is not just to do whatever you wish to do. You know, the other day I was watching um, uh, 
little video. I've watched a lot of videos these past few days because I've been in literally in bed. <clears throat> and um, I was watching this video of the the pronouns and the view, own nouns or whatever. And and you know what? These people really believe that. Like they 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 don't know if they're male or female or or cats or dogs or I was like, I mean, you hear about it for but, but for people to really say, well, I really don't know. Well, you know, I don't want to disrespect you because even though you look like a man, but we don't know what your pronouns are. It's depending on how people feel each and every day. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, how lost is our world? Because they literally, literally believe these things about themselves. Which tells me that they don't have true freedom. But they're in bondage. And they're blinded, 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 blinded by the scales of the devil, of our society, of our government. And it was sad. I was like thinking to myself, man, I'm like, they've come up with over a thousand genders. And I'm like, wow, there's supposed to only be two genders, male and female, that's it. And that's all there is. People want us to respect their right to feel however they want to feel and, and if they feel like they a dog today or a cat or whatever, they're literally putting um, those boxes for the cats in litter boxes in classrooms. And I'm like thinking to myself, wow. See, but Jesus spoke of a deeper aspect of freedom that pertains to the state of our souls. God wants to free us. God wants to free them from every internal form of bondage that prevents us from becoming the person He created us to be. See, this kind of freedom is not achieved by war and revolution, but by the knowledge of truth. As we open up with the Scriptures, Let's go ahead and stand for the reading of the scripture this morning. Amen. <clears throat> John chapter 8, we're going to start in verse 31. I'm going to be drinking a lot of water this morning because all the medicine I've been drinking dries out my mouth. 831. Everybody there? Amen. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You may be seated. See, to be set free is to know the truth, the truth about ourselves and the truth about Jesus as our liberator, the one that freed us from the bondage of sin, the one that freed us from our own selves. We are slaves to our sinful nature with God's truth as the standard for our moral conduct. We can recognize and confess our struggles and our sins. Why do we continue to hold on to the bondage of sin? Why do we continue to hold on to the things of the world if Jesus has already freed us from it? A lot of times because that's what we relate to. That's what we identify ourselves with. See, but those are in, who are in Christ are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We have a new identity now. We don't identify with our old self anymore. With the one that used to run around and, and, and live that sinful lifestyle. 
But we identify ourselves as righteous, as children of God, as holy men and women of God. So what happens? Our mentality has to change. <clears throat> as we confess these, as we confess our sins, we share the truth about our lives. Seeing the truth and speaking the truth in this way frees us when we confess it. See, if we confess our sin to one another, we shall be healed. If we confess it to Christ, we will be forgiven. But we have to turn our broken lives over to God, who alone can make us whole. But first, we have to acknowledge the truth. We have to acknowledge of what's taking place at the cross on our behalf to bring us true freedom. You know, in the years that I've um, been involved in prison ministry, I've met so many amazing men of God. And I've noticed that there has been, that I've witnessed a lot more men in, that are more free inside, locked up, than there are on the outside. Because they're truly experiencing a true freedom. A true freedom of what got them in that place. Because we know that there's still consequences for our sin. Even though we've already been made free. <laughs> Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who was lost? We. All of us. At one time or another. You're like, Pastor, I've never been lost. I've always found my way. Thank God for GPS. But we were finding our way straight to the pit of hell because that's what sin does. It brings death. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But Jesus has come to give us life and life in abundance. See, salvation is just the beginning of our Christian life, of our walk with God. When we discover to live in God's will, we can enjoy the fullness and abundance He promised. We discover the richness of living in the will of Almighty God. Do you guys want to live in God's will or in your own will? Because a lot of us are still living in our own will. We're doing things how we want to do them. We don't want to submit to God's authority. We don't want to submit or surrender to His Lordship. And what I mean by that is, is that we don't want to do or act on what He's asked us to do, to keep His commandments. Luke 4.18-19 through 19, You know, it was so awesome last Monday for our, for our, for our orientation for the for the boot camp. It was awesome because even though there was a little bit, but let me tell you one thing, that when we're done with these next eight weeks, you're going to have men come out transformed and renewed by the power of God. There's some men that have came, that came in that are, they're doing okay. But you know what? There's always room for improvement in all of our lives. I know, speaking about myself. So Luke 4, 18 and 19, the word of the Lord says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You can also say, to set free those who are oppressed by the powerful word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many of us have walked in bondage for year and year and year and year after year after year? 
But God wants to free us. He wants us to recognize what Jesus has done on our behalf to bring true freedom. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. See, some, somebody or something has to die so that we could gain something. And Jesus came to be that ultimate sacrifice for us, for you and I, to bring true freedom. And let me tell you that the spiritual war is greater and bigger than any physical war that you could ever imagine. Why? Because they're fighting for our souls. The enemy's after our souls. He wants to take us to the pit of hell. See, whether we recognize it or not, all of us have been held captive at one point or another in our life. Jesus wants to reveal those hidden areas of bondage and lack of control so we can deal with them and live in true freedom. He wants us to live in what? True freedom. But we have to understand who we are in Christ. So let's look at some causes of captivity. First one is errors. Some people are in bondage for false beliefs. Those who think good works or performance earn God's acceptance will never know what good enough and how much is sufficient. Others have confusing ideas about what's going to, who's going to heaven. Some believe everyone is universally accepted into heaven whether they accept Jesus as Savior or not. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. Not everybody is going to make it, church. We have to be ready. We have to be prepared. See, right now we're living this life. We're, we're alive right now. We're doing our daily things. But that day is going to come where we have to answer to Almighty God. And that's going to be for eternal, for eternity. There's no take backs. They can't say, oops, let me get things right. No. When that day comes, when your name is called, your name is called, there's nothing that we can do to avoid it. We're going to all have to answer to Him. But sometimes we don't think of death. The only time we think of death is when a loved one dies or we go to a funeral. Or, But see, those of us that believe have to understand that we've already put the old man to death. We've already put the, we already killed the old man. Now we're alive in Christ. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. So why are we going to continue to allow the things of the past to hinder our walk with Him for the future? And a lot of times, it's hard for us to do. It's hard for us to let go of things. It's hard for us to, to just say, okay, I'm starting a brand new page today. Sometimes we feel like we have some kind of entitlement. So what's another one? Evil habits. A prevailing attitude today is, this is my life. I can do whatever I want. However, Toleration of sinful practices results in enslavement to them. You know what? You can do whatever you want. But leave me out of it. You know, people want us to accept them for what they are and what they do. Just because you stand on your beliefs doesn't mean that you're disrespecting them. You know, now it's hard they, they don't want you to, to address people by ma'am or sir because you don't understand what they're feeling, right? But we're going to be truthful to ourselves. What we see. I don't care. You can tell me that you're a cat, but you're still a man or a woman that I see. And that's how I'm going to address you. I'm not going to address you as kitty cat. Come here, kitty cat. Come on, people. These are the garbage that people are believing Today, that's garbage. 
How can people have any sense? They don't. Why? Because they're still in bondage to the sinful nature of this world. And sometimes it's like frustrating. You want to get people in like, come on dude, let's see what. Take off all your clothes and I'll tell you exactly what you are. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, don't get it all twisted up, okay? Don't make a meme or anything like that. But we have to understand, church, that just because we don't want to fall into their theology of what they think they are, I'm calling it what I see. Period. <clears throat> Another one is lying and deception. For some people, dishonesty is a lifestyle, especially if they fear rejection or have grown up telling lies. You know, people that lie, when you tell the truth, you're going to hear the same story a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, five years from now. But when you're lying, you're like, man, what did I say? I can't remember. And that's how you're caught in your lies. Because you have to keep trying to make up stories that you can't remember. But when you speak the truth, you know exactly what happened, exactly what you said, if it's one year or two years from now. Let's not be men and women. Let's be truthful men and women that speak the truth. Even if it's not the best thing at the moment or whatever you feel. But we always have the purpose to do the right thing. Another one is sexual immorality. Many people hold the misconception that expressing their sexuality Whenever and however they please is true freedom. That's wrong. In reality, they are held captive by their lust. You see it all over the place. All over the place you see it. How, how people are dressing these days, they, they have no respect for themselves. They have no respect for others. It just, it's like, you know what? I mean, it's just, it's sad. It's sad, but, but it has to give us and, and help us realize the work that we have ahead of us. But the thing is, is that these people, they truly believe that that's true freedom. But deep down inside, they're in a prison cell. But they don't know it. See, many of us were in a prison cell, and we never knew it. I knew I was in a prison cell, and I never knew it. I never understood why I was like I was. I never understood why I had so much anger. I never understood why I couldn't speak the truth. I never understood why I was like I was. And I'm not saying that I was like the worst man ever to live on the planet. No, what I'm saying is that I was being deceived by the enemy. And that's how a lot of, a lot of us are still living our lives. Even in the, in the church world, even in church. See, because religion has become... We, we're starting to identify ourselves with religion instead of identifying ourselves with Christ. See, there's nothing that we can do that's going to make the Lord love us more or love us any less. Say, oh, I'm going to give a sandwich to this homeless for the Lord can love me more. No. He proved and showed His love by sending His Son to die on the cross so that you and I can live in true freedom. True freedom. Another one is laziness. 
How many of us know people that are lazy? It's just like, right? There's somebody hanging around us all the time that just like, oh man, you know, I'm always making excuses. Constantly avoiding work is bondage to laziness. You know, now that I'm <clears throat> working nights, uh, I'm now that I'm not working nights and stuff. You know, I every time uh, Ramon comes and picks up my brother for work, I go and hide because I don't want him to say think that I'm home, so he wants to take me too. And I'm just. I'm just joking. But the thing about being lazy is, is being lazy and, and letting your mind just be unoccupied. You know, when I gave my life to the Lord, I couldn't be lazy. You have to keep your mind occupied because if you have any downtime, it belongs to the enemy. He's going to run you ragged. He's going to make you think things that you shouldn't be thinking. And my wife says, babe, you need to take a break. I, I know I need to take a break, but I can't leave my, I can't be without doing something. Like these last three days that I was in bed, I like, I'd get up and I said, okay, today is the day I'm going to get up. And then I'd like start walking sideways and stuff because of the fever. And I'm like, I guess I think I better go back to, to bed and sleep this one off, right? <clears throat> Then we have drunkenness. Addiction to alcohol enslaves individuals and causes heartache, misery, and suffering for the families. We've all been there. I've been there. I didn't realize and understand the kind of pain I put my family through. I didn't understand or realize what kind of suffering took place because of my actions. Why? Because I was thinking of myself. But I was blaming everybody beside myself. I'm like, you know what? It just runs in my family. It's just going to continue and continue and continue. But there has to come a point in our lives that we have to break these things that run in our families. Sin runs in our family. When are we going to break it? We have to get to that point to say, you know what? It stops with me. And then people come and say, oh, look at so-and-so. They think they're all holier than that. You know what? That's a compliment. Call it as you see it. If we choose to follow God's judgments, if we choose to follow God's commands, and people want to laugh at us, then let them laugh all they want. But the only reason that they're laughing is because they're hurting within themselves. And they've never experienced true freedom. You know what? We're far from perfect. But we serve a God that is perfect. And we are righteous only because of what was done at the cross. We are holy only by what was done at the cross. Not by our works. Right? Right. Everybody say right. We're going to have to start doing some jumping jacks or some Colin Stenex or have a couple uh, videos you know, that my wife does in the mornings and stuff like this for that way. You know, start doing Taibo. You learn self-defense and wake up at the same time. I used to have my compadre. He always used to make fun of the Taibo, but just the way he would say it was funny. But anyway, then we have profanity. You know what? <clears throat> People that are still using this, this kind of language literally don't, don't see anything wrong with it. Like, now I can realize when I hear it, I realize I'm like, man, I used to speak like that? I'm like, man, it sounds horrible. <laughs> see, but I never used to recognize it when I was the one speaking. It was like every other word was, was a curse word. Every other word was, was a word speaking death. 
you know, now it's funny because when I'm around people and stuff like this and, and something slips out, they're like, oh, sorry. And I'm like, why you you don't have to apologize to me. You're dishonoring God. I don't even use profanity in my dreams anymore. See, because this is a this is a part of my life. It was the way I spoke. It was a part of my vocabulary. This is the way I spoke every day. The only ones I would never speak profanity to was my parents. But my wife heard all of it. But now, see, when, when God comes and frees us and brings true freedom in our life, we can see where our sinful nature used to be and we can recognize. We're like, wow. Thank you, Jesus, for opening up my eyes. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to see and to witness beforehand how awful that sounds. Right? Am I the only one that ever used to struggle with this? Or am I just the only one that's being truthful this morning? I'm just being transparent. See, but until we experience true freedom, we're not going to recognize the things that we're doing are wrong. It starts, you know, Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any corrupt speech come out of your mouth. In Proverbs it talks about speaking blessings, not curses. Another one is, <clears throat> is emotions. Our emotional bondage is sometimes very difficult to identify because it lies deep inside a person and often originates in childhood. One of the signs in an inability to overcome a particular sin despite repeated, repeated confession and repentance, the only way to become free is to discover the emotion which is feeling the sin. So what's feeling it? What's giving it fuel? What's feeling the fire of our sinful nature? Me, for me, it was like I was an emotional eater. Like, I'm having problems, I eat. And then late at night, and then later on, years and years and years later, you can tell I was an emotional eater because, you know, I got pretty heavy. But sometimes we try to disguise what's really going on with something else so that we don't have to focus on what's really going on. And what's really going on is our sinful behaviors, is our sinful habits. Another one is fear. See, despite being gifted with abilities and talents, some people never move forward in life because they are captured by fear of failure, rejection. You know what? You've already failed if you've never taken that step of faith. What's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work out, then do it again. See, whenever you're out to do something, there should never be an option B because when you have an option B, you're already saying that option A is not going to work. So there should only be one option, and that's the first option. But if you have A, B, and C, and D, you're already telling yourself, you know what, these ain't going to even work, so I'm, this is just going to be like a backup. No. If you're going to step out in faith, step out in faith. We all have abilities 
and gifts that the Lord has gifted us with. Why has He gifted us with these gifts? To expand the kingdom of God here on earth. And then we have a false guilt. Once we trust Christ as our Savior, all our sins are forgiven. But if we repeatedly confess and repent of the same sin, we're under a burden of false guilt. When we come to repentance, are we coming in in true, true, total surrender and repentance to the Lord? Or is it just to make me feel good at the moment? We gotta be careful about this. And then we have jealousy. When jealousy holds us captive, we don't even think straight. When we think of jealousy, we right away put it to relationship, right? You think being jealous of your husband or being jealous of your wife, that's the first thing that we think about is your relationship with your spouse. See, but God's jealous about us. He wants us to put Him first. He wants to be first in our life. He's not going to settle for second to nobody or nothing. And it just goes to demonstrate to us and to show us how important it is to have a relationship with Him. How important it is to have that that intimacy with our God. When everything's going good and when things ain't going, maybe not the way we want it to be going. But we have to remember, church, that we're under His will, not our own will. There's going to be trials and tribulations, but there's also going to be times in our life with great success. There's going to be times in our life with great blessings. And then there's going to be times in our life that we feel like we're going through a desert. But in neither of them is God ever going to separate Himself from us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. He didn't say, though I stop in the valley of the shadow of death. No. He said, though I walk. So, But a lot of us, we get our backpacks and we get our tents and our sleeping bags and we just hang out there for a while. No. Keep moving. You're like, man, I found an awesome spot in this desert, in this valley. I'm just going to kick it here for a while. No. You gotta keep walking, keep moving. See? Valleys are gonna come and go. But it's part of our growth. It's part of our life. And why does God allow us to experience those valleys? So that we can bring glory and honor to Him. Because He's the only one that can bring us through those valleys and still have our head on, right? Because there's times in our life that we feel like, man, we're like, I don't know how much I can take anymore. I don't know how much more I can handle. God doesn't want you to handle anything. He just wants you to surrender everything over to Him, to His will. Then we have bitterness. Those who can't get past mistreatment or adversity will find the, that bitterness becomes part of their lives, affecting what they think, feel, and do. And that's what we do at times. Unforgiveness. God wants to forgive those who offend us and move on with life. But unforgiveness ensnares us and puts us back in bondage. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm almost done. We got like 45 more minutes. I'm trying to make up for the next Sunday too. I put 
combine both, okay? And another one is insecurity. If our sense of security is tied to anything earthly, we'll feel vulnerable because everything changes. Jesus is the stabilizer who breaks the bonds of insecurity because He's always the same. Thank God that He doesn't change. We don't serve a God that's schizophrenic that one day He's going to say, go feed the poor, and the next day He's going to say, you know what? Stay home. But a lot of us run our minds like that. I've had people come in the past, oh, the Lord has called me to to support you, Pastor. The Lord has called me to do this. The Lord has called me to do that. And then when things ain't going their way, they're gone. My God isn't schizophrenic. Their God must have been schizophrenic, but not mine. You know, when the Lord planted my wife and I in a church, we were faithful and loyal for eight and a half years. Did I agree with everything? Absolutely not. But I was there until the Lord told me to leave. If I would have gone on my emotions, we wouldn't have lasted six months. But see, what we do, we have to do it as unto the Lord, not for anybody else. When we gave to the church, when we tithe, when we give... What the church does with it, it's, they have to answer to God, not you. You're doing what God has called you to do. It's because we're still dealing with those insecurities in our life. <clears throat> I know who I am in Christ. And nobody can change my mind, change my direction, or tell me anything different. Because I knew, I know who Jesus is and I know who I am in Him. And that's the place that we all need to be. Because if we're not in that place, we're going to be bouncing back and forth, back and forth. And there's never going to be any growth in our life. We're always going to struggle with the same things over and over and over. Why? Because there's no structure. There has to be structure in our lives. We know that any area of captivity can carry additional consequences. So I'm going to talk a little bit about effective effects of bondage, and then I'll begin to close. <clears throat> it affects our personal testimony. <clears throat> Other people see if our behavior doesn't match our profession of faith. How many of us can agree? We're trying to be a witness to this world, right? We're trying to be a witness to our family. But then we start reacting like them, we start acting like them, we start acting like the world. Then what's it going to do to our testimony? I'm going to start cussing or, or cursing like a sailor with my friends and, and speaking all this. When I'm speaking against them, I'm trying to be a witness to draw them into God's kingdom. But then again, I'm not separating myself. See, God came, sent Jesus to set us apart for Him. It hinders our personal growth. As long as we allow areas of bondage in our lives, we'll hinder what God wants to do in and through us. Don't we want God to just use us in a mighty, mighty way to be able to bless somebody else, to be able to draw somebody into His kingdom? That heaven will be more populated because that we were obedient here on earth for Him. <clears throat> the truth that sets us free when Jesus said the truth will make you free, 
What did he mean by that? Truth about our salvation. We must recognize that freedom is based on a relationship with Christ. We have the indwelling Holy Spirit to guide and empower us to overcome any bondage that we may be facing with or dealing with at the time. Truth about our position. We are now children of God and joint heirs with Christ, accepted, forgiven, and spiritually alive to accomplish His plans for our lives, the Lord wants to reveal any hidden areas of bondage and help us deal with them. Any hidden areas in our life that we're trying to bury, that we no longer want to deal with, which is like, if we've never brought it to light, if we've never brought it to the Lord and say, here it goes, Lord. I'm surrendering everything to you. That in itself can hinder our walk with God. But we must bring it, bring it and just surrender it all to the Lord. Because there's nothing good is going to come out of it. And then we have truth about our possessions. As children of God, we have the divine power, promises, and nature which provide everything we need to live a godly life. See, Jesus, Jesus has provided everything for us. He's provided us with a way out of bondage. He's provided for us a way to have eternal life with Him and spend all eternity with Him. Does anybody know what eternity means? Forever. Who knows what forever means? I'm giving you guys an English class right now. Never ending. Just forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Just think about the... Wow, man, I like try to wrap my mind around it and I can't. Just how amazing and how beautiful it's going to be in the presence of your Creator for all eternity. But it's going to be even more awesome when we get up to heaven and then there's going to be all these line of people waiting to receive you saying thank you for telling me about Jesus. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for giving me that word. Thank you. Yeah. And then continue to move on for your rewards. I don't want to just squeeze into heaven. I don't want to just like barely, barely make it to where the gate like scrapes my back. I want to get up there and I want to receive um... Um, uh, now words are going to be like okay I have a certificate here for Afonso Antillon I just said the word but <clears throat> but anyway I want to get up there and I want to receive the rewards I want, I want to be able to get up there and they'll be like wow see you and I have to understand that we can impact this world now. We can impact this world now like never it's never been impacted before. But it has to start with us. Are we willing to surrender everything that we have to the Lord? Are we willing to say, Lord, I'm tired of living in bondage. I'm tired of living in my sinful nature. If we're praying for specific things in our life, believe God that it will come to pass. But we can't say enough is enough. We have to believe God saying, you know what, Lord, here I am, Lord, with everything that I have. 
I mean, a lot of us are even surprised that we're even in church these days. See, we're, we're always looking for a physical miracle. But let me tell you that you are the miracle that everybody sees every day. You're the miracle that you can share with people. Because for us to even be here having this conversation this morning is a miracle, right? Huh? And how we used to think and how we used to act and all these things. Amen? Amen. But I want to encourage you this morning. Whatever's holding us back, what's holding us back from just giving everything, everything unto the Lord? What's holding us back from just saying, Lord, here I am, Lord, use me. Let me tell you, your life will change, but for the better, not for the worse. But we have to put Him above all things. You know, when I seen Andrew and his family walk in this morning, I'm like, man, that's a miracle in itself. But it just proves to us the faithful God that we serve, that heard our cry, that heard our plead, that heard our prayer. Whatever family that you're believing for, Continue to seek the Lord, continue to pray, continue to bring them to the altar and let God do His work. We can't change people. I can't change you. Nobody can change you. Only God can cause the change in your life. Only He can cause the transformation in your life. So get out of the way and let Him work. Because He does a lot better job than what we will ever do. That I can promise you. Because my wife tried to change me for so many years and it just backfired on her. But when God changed me, when God got a hold of me, it don't backfire on Him. He, he'll make sure that you get up here, right? So I want to encourage you this morning, church, that That you understand that tomorrow is not promised to any of us. And we all know that. The Bible says that this is the day of salvation. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. John 10.10 10 says, The thief came to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life in abundance. So we know what the enemy's job is. To kill, steal, and destroy that which belongs to God. And that's you and I. Let's go ahead and stand. As we close in prayer, <clears throat> I want to invite you this morning, if you're struggling in any of those areas, give us the opportunity to anoint you and pray over you and believe God with you. Because there's no reason why you and I should be living in bondage. There's no reason why you and I should be living in, in this life that, that we no longer, it's no longer even pleasing to us. We just don't know how to escape it. And let me tell you, church, that this morning that the only escape is through Jesus. The only freedom can come through Jesus. And He's offering that to us this morning because tomorrow is not going to be promised to any of us. We might not have an opportunity tomorrow. So let's get things right today. Amen.
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come before your holy throne this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. Father, we thank you for your freedom, Father God, that we find only in your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we're so grateful, Heavenly Father. We're so thankful, Father God. Man, I wake up every morning just pinching myself, Father God, because I can't believe where you brought us from and what you just continue to do in each and every one of our lives, Father God. Father, but that we would be a people that is changed and transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. That you would change our hearts. That you would renew our minds. That you would change our direction, Heavenly Father. That we would seek you above all else. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Father God, I thank you for each and every one here this morning, Father God. I thank you for Andrew and his family, Father God, the whole Dominguez family, Father God. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Thank you for being with Andrew, Father God, as as he went through the surgery, Father God, and thank you for bringing him back home safe with his loving family, Father God. Father, I'm so grateful, Father God, for, for giving us the opportunity, Father, to <clears throat> come before your throne this morning and just be transparent with you and lay everything at your feet right now. As we leave here this morning, Father, I just pray blessings upon each and every one. Let's hear, Father God, and those that are watching online, Father God, I just pray that you would bless them abundantly, Father God. And if they don't have a relationship with you, Father God, that you would reveal yourself to them, Heavenly Father, so that they would seek you with everything that they have. Father, we thank you, we praise you. We give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you all for being here. Amen.